we're going to be in chapter 12, but it skipped a lot of stuff in chapter 11. Now, I think that we might need to look at, there was immediately after Saul had became uh, king. And uh, if you read, if you have your Bibles, I would like to go back to uh, Samuel chapter 11, chapter 10, in the last few verses. What, what, what we studied last week when he was presented. In verse 27, it talk about, but the children of Balaam said, how shall this man save us? And they despised him and brought him no presents, but he held his peace. So, you know, usually when the, a king or somebody has been appointed, and folk come to see him and everything, they bring in presents and stuff. You know, I get this why these uh, presidents and stuff we got now, you know, get so much stuff when they get up there. <laughs> you know, they get up in these offers. You, know, you need to think sure. They make these offers, they're going to be set for life. <laughs> you know, they're going to have all kind of connections all over the world. And I'm talking about they, they really going to be, you, you got to stack deck. When, once you begin, become a president or whatever, or, you're going to have a stacked deck for the life from here on out. You're going to have all kind of folks known all over the world. And, and, and you have all kind of ties and stuff. You can get this and you can get that. But they did not want Saul to be king. So they didn't bring him nothing. And uh, going on in chapter number 11, I'm not just going to read all this, but anyway, at the beginning, verse number 11, Nanesh, the Amor, Amorite, came up and encamped around Jabeshgil and all the men of Je now I hope I'm pronouncing the word right Jabez said unto Nahash make a covenant with us we will serve thee so no sooner did Samuel I mean Saul get there he got to begin to get tested folk came in a camp round the Amorite right did and, and, and they his people said hey look Make a covenant with us that we'll serve you. God didn't want him, his people serving them. And, and they had just anointed themselves a king, you know, and uh, so, and it goes on, verse 2, Nahash, the Amorite, answered them on this, on this condition. Will I make a covenant with you? that I may tr thrust out all your right eye and lay it for a reproach upon Israel. They, 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 them are like pretty tough one. You know, point their eyes out, all their right eye, and make them a reproach. So, but anyway, going on after this, uh, going on verse 3, uh, the elders, they told him, well, seven days, give us seven days, you know, they were going to get back with him, whatever, let them know what they're going to do, make it short. And then they sent a messenger that came unto Saul in verse 4 and uh, told him what was going on. Verse 5, and after Saul had heard all these things, uh, he, he, he did not like it. He said, he asked the people, what else? In verse number 5, he said, behold, Saul came after he heard he heard out of the field and Saul said what ail is the people that they weep and they told him the tidings of the men of Jebus so Saul did not like it you know you just he just getting in the kingdom ship and uh, here it is already he got to stand up and, 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 and uh, do something right now you know you know, a lot of times, as soon as something happens, you know, just like I look at this, just like when a person first obeyed the gospel, a lot of times, no sooner he obeyed the gospel, here come, he get ambushed. <laughs> but all the folks and all the surrounding folks like that, trying them and, you know, why are you going over there and getting with those people? Why this and all that? But anyway, Saul got this step up right here. Verses uh, number six. The Spirit of God came unto Saul when he heard those tidings, and in his anger was come greatly. So Saul said in verse 7, if someone have the Bible, would you read verses 7 through verses uh, number 9, please? So he took the yoke of Saul and 
yoke of oxen and cut them to pieces and sent them throughout all the territory of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whoever does not go out with Saul and Samuel to battle, so it shall be done to his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. When he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah 30,000. Nine as well? Yes. And, and they said to the messengers who came, Thus you shall say to the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow by the time the sun is hot, you shall have help. Then the messengers came and reported it to the son of Jabesh, and they were glad. Okay. So uh, Saul was, he was fierce, he was mad. So he took a yoke. I'm pretty sure most of us know what a yoke is, the, the older people. You know, I used to see them when they used to put them on cows. I ain't never seen them, I ain't been around oxen much, but I know what an ox is. But when I was growing up, my dad used to put them on cows and stuff to keep them from getting out the fence, you know. And uh, I had made a few myself. But, uh, and uh, that, that time, he took it and grinded it up, cut it up. And told him what y'all don't help. You see how this I did this here yoke. This how you all gonna be. <laughs> so you know, and, and they, you know, they had a lot of people, and, and they, they could stay in the fight, but a lot of, they didn't want to do. You know, you look at the number and versus number uh, eight. That was a lot of people. You know, but they were scared. You know, huh? This, this is still got kind of nothing new going back all the way to the selection process. Yeah. <laughs> People are showing the same thing over and over again. They're wanting to complain about stuff, but they're not real quick to be the first ones to jump up and do it. Do something, right. You know, and like I say, you could have a old saying, you can have a great leader, but you got to have followers also. And uh, a leader's good, but he got to have men uh, that want to follow him and aid him in, in everything. So, hey, a leader out there by himself can't do very much. Other than, you know, God, God with you, that's all you need. But, you know, he going to make sure everything's okay. But in that aspect, God, if you got a good leader, God going to make it so that people will fall in here. Everybody can't stand to be the leader. You know, everybody can't be the quarterback on the, quarter, on the football team. Everybody can't be the preacher in the church, neither. But you got a job that you could do. And you could help the preacher be a, a good person. And... and and also, your surroundings make you good, too, with people you got helping you out. Okay, uh, verses 10, Therefore, the men of Jerbes said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seem good unto you. So, but they had, they were going to surprise the Amorites. The Amorites was uh, thinking that they had got them, had bluffed them down, and they was going to just fall into their hands the way that they wanted, but this was not going to happen. And verses number 11, and it came, and it was so on tomorrow that Saul put the peoples in three companies, and they came out. They came into the midst of the host of the morning watch and slew the Amorites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered so that two of them were not left together. So all of them were cluttered up together so he scattered them so much. It wasn't even two people standing together. So was like, they, they got whipped. Well, real bad, and, and you know, and they they had they had ears were scared, <laughs> you, you know. Sometimes you you know sometimes you don't know what you can do. When we talk about in the Lord saying that you can't do nothing on your own, but with God you, you can do anything. It's possible, but with man by itself it's not. But with God anything is possible, and, and you know. A lot of times you sit back and woe me. No, ain't nothing going to get done. But if you get up and try, you, you, you'll be amazed what you can do or what can happen. Any questions or comments? Okay. 
just sort of quick, would someone take the next four, next verses and read through the end of the chapter and we get on to chapter 12? The people said unto Samuel, Who is he that says, Shall Saul reign over us? Bring the men that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not be a man put to death this day, for today the Lord hath brought salvation in Israel. Then Samuel to the, said Samuel to the people, Come and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord, and there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. Okay. So, a lot of things that turned around on, you know, those, those ones that wanted to rebel against them at first, you know, so the people turned on. We see that a lot as we study in this lesson. People stand up and they go against the Lord people, and then when the Lord deal with them, it turn around on them. And so, you know, that's what make me so thankful today that going back reading this stuff, <laughs> what can happen to us if we do the same thing? You know, you know, you, you <laughs> go ahead, Dan. Okay, but yeah, you, we, the same thing can happen to us if we're not careful. You know. We're bigger and, and care on and stuff, and you gripe about somebody up in leadership or somebody go up and put in a play. And then most of the time, the one doing all the griping ain't going to do nothing. You, you know, you, you know, it just cause turmoil and, and troublemaking, you know. And, and, and uh, an older guy in our community, when I was coming up, he said, a lot of times, them folks there, they just try to stop somebody else from doing something. You know, they ain't going to do nothing, but they're going to try to stop somebody else from doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's true on a lot of things. You know, that's what Satan uh, wants you to do anyway. He wants he want you to stay where you're at. If you, you're doing wrong, come on, stay with me. Uh, you send a couple friends around. Hey, man, you know, you ain't got to go there today, man. You ain't got to go to church today or whatever. Just hang out with us. <laughs> you know, when I first used to get baptized and obeyed the Lord, that was real reverent with me. I had people that used to try to do that all the time. And I'm going to be honest, on Sunday morning, I'd probably be out there at Lakeland playing basketball from about 9 until about 1 o'clock. We had, we played, had teams and stuff like that, and that was our practice time. We'd go out there and practice on Sunday morning, instead of going to church. And uh, when I got obeyed, I obeyed the gospel and started going, everybody, man, you ain't going out there practicing. Nope, I'm not going. To, they, they, they stayed at me for about two years until so they seen it wasn't going to work, and they finally let me on. But uh, <laughs> and, and I used to play on those city league teams and stuff like that. But and, and all they always come up with stuff like on Wednesday night or even we didn't play ball in the league on Wednesday night. But they want to the practice on Wednesday night. They want to practice on Sunday morning. You know, because a lot of people be out working. Well, that was a good time. You know, if you want a Christian, you want to go to church. <laughs> you know, but but when you change your lifestyle, you got to change a lot of things too. You know, the question to come in. Uh, okay, we read for chapter 12 now. Uh, verses 1, chapter 12, uh, in the study guide, Now Samuel said unto Israel, Indeed, I shall heed your voice in all that you, all that you said to me, and have made a king over you. And now there is, there is the king walk before, walking before you. And I am old and gray-headed, and look, and look, my sons are with you. I have walked before you from my child to this day. So Samuel was letting them know, hey, look, I have led you straight and right. Uh, verse 2 goes on, and oh, what first for verse 2, he said, now, this is what I hearken unto your voice. One, you said you want a king. I made a king over you. Here he is, standing before you. Uh, he said, I'm, I'm old, I'm gray headed. You no, know, he getting old now. He can't do all these things now. He got turned over to someone else. Uh, so, you all didn't want a judge like God wanted to do, keep a judge over you all, but you want a king. I done got too old to be doing all this. I'm gray-headed. You know, and it come a time, 
some men had to realize, women too, that they done got old. It time for somebody else to do. You could be a help, but sometimes you had to step back and let a younger person do. And sometimes some people, but not till I die. Well, you will one day. <laughs> and somebody else going to keep it going and, and, and stuff. So, But anyway, Samuel was, was doing what the Lord said. Uh, and he goes on and talks about his, he got old and gray head. Now he got it two sons the whip them. And he said, I have walked before you from my child to this day. Since he was a child. So and most of all of them were they, they knew Samuel. And they knew that he had walked with them and he had did right. He's going to go on and explain to them about no one can accuse me of wrongdoing. You, you know, in a lot, lot of cases, you know, people could be accused of wrongdoing. But in this case, they couldn't prove nothing on Samuel, what he did wrong. The only thing we were standing back a couple of weeks ago, his boy was a little rough. But it wasn't him, it was them. You know, so... Uh, and sometimes you can do the best you can. Some of them have a little rough edge on them anyway. So, <laughs> but anyway, verses number three and four, someone take those two, those two verses. Here I am, witness against me, and spoke the Lord, and the Lord said unto me, Get Okay, uh, so he goes on in verse 3 and he tells about, hey, look, do any of y'all have anything to give me what I've done since I've been up there? Uh, being anointed the Jew, he says that he had taken no one oxen, he had taken no one donkeys, and uh, he had taken, uh, he hadn't cheated anymore, he had not oppressed anymore. Uh, he had not received bribery. You know, a lot of times people in position, they receive bribery to get certain things and everything. He said he hadn't done none of that. Uh, he hadn't, uh, uh, also, he said, look, if I have done any of these things, I will restore it back to you. Now, if someone comes to you with an accusation that you might be them for God, or even if you thought it might not have been fair, and you, to, you turn around and say, well, look, if I, if I did do you wrong here, I'm going to restore it back to you. Now, what's that telling you? <coughs> That's right. He want to make it right. Even if you thought he was wrong, he want to make it right. So he goes on, verse 4, and they say, you have not cheated us or oppressed us, nor have you taken anything from any man's hand. So he would he didn't have no nothing that they could accuse him of at this point. Nothing. And he goes on verse five. Then he said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointment is witness this day. You have not found anything in my hand. And they answer, he is witness. So, the Lord is true, what they say. He, you ain't found nothing. You ain't found nothing to me that was wrong. I've stood before you. I led you in a way that's right, in the way God had told me to lead you, have instructed me to lead you. That's, that's what I've done. And so, really, they couldn't find no fault in But really, they didn't want to accept the king that was there. And Samuel was the one that had to anoint the king. You know, they wanted the king, but they didn't want himself. And Samuel letting them know, hey, look, I, I'm, a, I'm moving on out of the way here. In a sense that, you know, here he is. You got to, you know, do what he said. And also Samuel, he still is going to stay there and help be a, a help to the king as we go on through the lesson. But they didn't find no wrong in Samuel. Any question or comment? Does 
as they say, he did it uh, in front of God and everybody. And he was going to leave with uh, a clear conscience and everything. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, a lot of folks, you know, talk. You know, I was reading the newspaper the other day, and, you know, you got a chance to, I'm just talking about the city of South Arthur's, more we on a little bit. You got a chance to come voice your opinion about things going on in this city. And uh, they said about 30 people showed up. And, and But you, when, it, when they met before with complaining, it was hundreds of them. But when they wanted to come and they voice their opinion that they could document everything and see what they can get done, about 30 people showed up. <laughs> but you know, that, that's the way we are. You know, and but when you didn't want to get up and talk and do all this kind of nonsense, reveling, you know, you know, you have crowds of people. Brother Joe? I think when it comes to real commitment, you have to commit yourself to whatever it is. That's when people back out. That's right. Show and tell. <laughs> you got to stand up and uh, you trying to, a lot of people stand back and they want to push somebody else up there. Going up there, and you tell them this, you tell them this. I don't been heard, oh, Wiley, you get up there and you just tell them this, tell them, tell them. I'm saying, well, where you gonna be at? Well, I, I want you to do. <laughs> but they gotta stay back out of the way. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we, you know, you get with them when we do that stuff. One go, the other one, you go. You go, you go. <laughs> uh, they won't get mad if you do it. And then, or that reminds our grade school was that way. Push somebody else up. And that one, Yeah, because they know what's going to happen. You, you, have to, you have to have a legitimate claim, and no one had a legitimate claim against Yeah, insane. that's right. Okay, all right. Now, the, the verses skip from verse 5 all the way down to 16, but I, I think those verses need to be sort of read in each other because they're leaving a lot of stuff out. So if you have your Bibles again, I'm going to read from verse uh, 6. On down to verse 9. Uh, Saul said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Abram, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now, therefore, stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteousness, acts of, of the Lord, which he did to you and to your father. When Jacob was come into Egypt, and your fathers carried, your father cried unto the Lord, then the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, which brought forth your fathers out of Egypt, and made them dwell in this place. And when they forgot, the Lord their God, he sold them into the land of the Syrians, captive of hosts, Hazar, and into the hand of the Philistines, and into the hands of the king of Moab. And they fought against them. Okay? So he going back and telling them what their fathers did. Why they had been in a situation in uh and the reason for what happened, because they turned against God. You, you know, and what he getting to the point here, as we get on down, if you do the same thing, you don't honor God and honor this king that had, you wanted. Same thing will happen to you. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you have to be plain with people sometimes. You know, I call it stop beating around the bush with them. You know, a lot of times people like to circle all around instead of this going on telling the person straight sometimes. Now, I'm not saying that go in there, jump on a person that sometimes you had, the person had to know what you're saying and understand why you said it. But a lot of times we sometimes beat around the bush with people and, and should this go straight and tell them if there's a problem with what needs to be done. And you, and you beat around the bush too much sometimes. You, You'll keep avoiding what you need to get to. Eventually, it's just like teaching the gospel. 
and you got a friend or family member that you know they're not a Christian according to how the Bible says it, eventually you got to tell that person according to the scripture. Pretty much he's going to end up seeing it, and he's going to say, well, you said I'm wrong. Well, the Bible said it. That's what it's going to come down to. Eventually it's going to have to be said. That I didn't write it, but the Bible said it. I got a brother-in-law, he said one time when I told him, you read the scripture for yourself. Oh, are you going to tell me my, my grandmama lived to get uh, 103 years old and the religion she had ain't good for her? It, you said she wrong. I thought, I didn't say nothing. You read what the scripture said. But he wanted to put it on me. I said, no, that's what the scripture said. But it wasn't nothing what the scripture said. He wanted to say it's me. <laughs> and and sometimes... I'm saying that you read in the strip and that's what it said. The answer is yeah. Boy, he was mad. God, not really, not to me. You know, you tell them what the strip is saying, you know. And so, a lot of times you have to, you know what, you're going to have to get to the point that, that fact true. Hey, yes. Well, we, we <coughs> had a little time, I probably <coughs> forgot. He's younger, about 24. Mm -hmm. I had a book we were studying, and uh, he asked me, he said, where you, where you get all this from? I said, well, I was right out of this book now. And uh, he said, just like you said, he said, you mean tell me I got to believe what you said <laughs> to my mama? I said, I believe my mama. I, I ain't telling you, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, I, I just looked at it and I just closed the book up and we got the newspaper. <laughs> so, I, you know, you, you can't talk to nobody like that. You know? Well, sometimes <laughs> they, they, they think about it, but you know, yeah. sometimes they think about it and come back and want to talk. You know, you and I work yeah, together. Came back. Yeah. Well, he, he might, but you know, you and I work together for yeah. what, about 11, 12 years. And, and you know, some of the discussion we'd have on the job, folks, you'd get mad. And yeah. you and me sometimes. Got a little heated at one another. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but sooner or later, we end back talking. You know, because we know we had to come back to the same point. You know, if we wanted to do right. You know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, someone, if you would take those, uh, stop to verse 9, verse 10 to uh, verses uh, 14, please. Then they cried out to the Lord and said, We have sinned because we have forsaken the Lord and served the devil's and now deliver us from the hand of our enemies, and we will serve you. The Lord sent Jeremiah, Bedan, Jephthah, and Samuel, and delivered you out of the hand of your enemies on every side. And you dwelt in safety. And when you saw that Nahash, the king of the Ammonites, came against you, you said to me, No, for the king shall reign over us, and the Lord, your God, is your king. Yeah, go ahead and read that. Now therefore, here is the king whom you have chosen, and whom you have desired. And take note, the Lord has set a king over you. Okay, so he, he let them know, hey, did what you wanted, <coughs> you know, and now you got it, you don't want it, but, you know, did what your people did back then, you know, same thing, you know. Okay, bro, Colin. End of verse 12 stings a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the Lord your God was your people. Yeah. That hurt. Yeah. You know what? He, he, he took care of you, but now... You, you wanted a king like the rest of the people. Now you got it. Okay, verse 14. Uh, if, uh, if you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king, the king that ranges over you, ranges over you continually follow the Lord, your Lord, follow the Lord your God, but if you, ye, will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, and as it was against your father. Now, therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord do will do before you are. So, you know this, you, you know, he telling them what did what happened to your people before you. And if you follow the Lord 
and your king, he will continue to be your guy. And he, he will save you. But, say, you know, and to me, you got to keep the commandment, the statutes. And he also mentioned that if you, your king fall it and you fall it, I, I, I will keep you and protect you. But, hey, look, both of you got to do, you and him. So, there's not only a thing for the teachers, preachers had to do, members had to do certain things. You, you know, they got to do their part too. You know, a lot of times, you up in the, any time you up in the front of folk, they hold you for a more high standard. Because you do it in a way, if you up there fooling with the word, you, you, you need to be a good student. But every, everybody got something to do. And everybody got to be accountable for something. <coughs> Okay, someone take uh, verses uh, 17 and 18. Is today not the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord, and he will send thunder and rain, that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great, which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking a king for yourselves. So send your call to the Lord, and the Lord send thunder and rain that day. And all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. You know, it continued. The Lord had to shake his people up every now and then. <laughs> you know, had to sort of scale. You know, they won't do right if you didn't. You know, it's just like people today, they just won't do right. You know, if you don't, they don't get sort of terrorized some kind of way. You know, a guy was, came by yesterday in my shop and he was telling me it was a good thing. He said that he, he was married and the wife told him, man, you need to stop drinking and care. No, he drank. And, and he said, he said, why? I'm going to tell you, he said, I don't stop drinking now. He said, I almost lost my job, I almost lost my wife for drinking. And he admitted, he said that he got a DWI and all this stuff, and, and he had to pay a big bill. He lived in, he, well, he was raised in the state of Alabama. He had an Alabama driver like he said. He got caught over here in Mississippi. He stayed, he lived, he lived over here, but he continued to keep his Alabama driver like He said, after he went through the DWI stuff here in, in Mississippi and got his license back, then they found about it in Alabama. Then they hit him again. And he said, man, he told me, you know, he ended up spending a bunch of money and almost lost a job and everything. He said, it ain't worth it. You know, and sometimes you had to, folks had to get slapped, knocked down before they eyes get open. And he said, he said, man, I let it alone. He said, I almost lost my job and I almost lost my wife. And then he said, the fine, he said, I had to let it go. He's his own, his life was suspended over here for 90 days. Then once he got out of the Mississippi thing, they suspended his life in Alabama for another 90 days. <laughs> okay. Okay, quickly, verse 19. And all the people said unto Samuel, pray for, pray for your servant. Pray for us, your servant, to the Lord God, that we might may not die, for we have added all our sins and evil as the Lord King for ourselves. So, they had added stuff too. <laughs>